Good happy Wednesday evening, everyone. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. We have a lot of news to get to this Wednesday evening, so let's begin. First up, we begin with breaking news. Gyrocopter crashes during landing attempt at Nashua Airport. Pilot suffers minor injuries, police say. A small aircraft crashed Wednesday afternoon at Nashua Airport. Emergency crews rushed to the airport shortly before 3 p.m. after a gyrocopter, a small single-seat helicopter, went off the runway and rolled over during a landing attempt. Police said the pilot suffered minor injuries and was taken to the hospital for treatment. This is breaking news story. It will be updated as more information comes into our newsroom. First flu-related death of season reported in New Hampshire. Victim is adult from Rockingham County. New Hampshire health officials have announced the first flu-related death in the state this season. Officials with the Department of Health and Human Services said an adult in the Rockingham County died after contracting the influenza virus. No periodic flu-related deaths have been reported. Flu activity in, is considered widespread in New Hampshire, and 45 other states, health officials said. Officials said the illness is especially dangerous for young and old, and those with underlying health concerns. The flu is most contagious in the first 24 to 48 hours of infection, often before people realize they have it. Experts said that's why washing hands and covering coughs are so important. Those with the flu should stay home from school or work until they're fever-free for at least 24 hours. It's also not too late to get the vaccine, either as a shot or nasal spray. User near main border report inability to place bets through sports betting app. Problem could affect state revenue from sports gambling. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Mike Cherry. We switched. I switched to Chevy. <laughs> Why do we switch? For adventure. For this. See why people are switching to Chevy. Find new roads at your local Chevy dealer. When online sports betting was legalized in New Hampshire, it generated a buzz at TJ's Food and Spirits in Portsmouth. Someone who places a bet um, is more likely to stick around and watch a game all the way through. But well, last weekend, a packed house drew attention bar owners did not anticipate. My staff and a few of our customers um, came to me and said, hey, we're having issues using the DraftKings Sports app. Turns out, in some circumstances, when people are close to the main border where sports gambling is not legal, customers see this notification from DraftKings, which says it cannot verify a user's location. Confused, Hayes contacted DraftKings. The response that I got personally was that it was a state-regulated issue. Hayes then canvassed Portsmouth, finding fluctuating hotspots and dead zones. She finally found a safe space two blocks away. In the summer, it's not as big a deal, but when it's 15 degrees and it's, you know, AFC Championship weekend, 
It's a little inconvenient. A profit on the line for the bar and for the state, which receives 50% of sports betting revenue. In a statement, Governor Sununu said, ensuring that everyone anywhere in New Hampshire can place a sports bet is critical and the Lottery Commission and DraftKings are on this issue to make the experience as seamless as possible. In a statement to WMUR, DraftKings says it is aware there is a problem and that this is often the result of a mobile phone signal pinging a tower outside New Hampshire and is usually an intermittent problem. And, of course, if you are experiencing an issue with the DraftKings app, the company encourages customers to reach out via their email support at DraftKings.com. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. One killed in rollover crash in Rochester, police say. Police identify victim as Glenn Pack. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Rochester man has been killed in an accident after his Jeep swerved into the wrong lane on North Main Street this morning. Police say Glenn Patch was driving south when he went into the northbound lane and hit a parked Ford Escape, which then caused his car to roll over. Patch was transported to the hospital where he died. North Main Street was closed for two hours after that accident. Anyone who may have seen that crash is being urged to call the Rochester Police Department. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Man faces charges in connection with two armed robberies in Manchester. George Johnson also charged with theft from Rite Aid, officials say. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. first told you about last month, Manchester police have arrested a man in connection with a robbery at the Cumberland Farms on Hanover Street. Police say George Johnson stole several sandwiches and pulled a knife on the store clerk who confronted him. Johnson is charged with armed robbery and fell in possession of a deadly weapon. He's also facing separate charges in connection with a theft at a Rite Aid and an armed robbery at a Best Buy. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Keen emergency officials say carbon monoxide threat over system error at Liberty Utilities distribution plant led to warning. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Andy Hirschberger. This economy is not working for most of us. There is not one county in the United States of America where someone working full-time at the minimum wage can afford a two-bedroom apartment. The biggest problem in our economy is simple. People are not getting paid enough. Aaron, we spoke with the uh, Keen Fire Chief here just a few moments ago, and he said that this first call came in at about 6 o'clock this morning from Liberty Utilities saying that they had a bad mixture of gas at the distribution plant and that this bad mixture could cause elevated CO levels. They say that the bad gas mixture was confined and then they immediately started going out and checking 25 locations here in Keene at random. They found two places, as you mentioned, that had some elevated CO levels. One was a three-unit uh, apartment complex here in Keene, and another was at a, a motel, a boiler room area at a motel here in Keene. They say that both places were quickly vented, uh, and there was no danger to any of the, the people who were inside at that time. The apartment building, they said they did have 
have to uh, evacuate five residents while they took care of vetting the area. They say that at this point, the uh, situation was declared uh, under control and safe at 9 a.m. Uh, the, the fire uh, chief said that one thing that was very important was that at both places uh, where they did find the elevated CO levels, both places had CO detectors and they were alerted that there was a problem. Putting live in Keene, I'm Andy Hershberger, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And now let's take a look at your U.S. stock market and see how your U.S. stock market closed for this Wednesday evening. And here's a look at that U.S. stock market for all of you for this Wednesday evening. Good out, Joe Industrial Average closed in the green one up. You know, stock closed in the green one up. S&P 500 closed in the green one up. Gold closed in the green one up. Oil closed in the green one up. U.S. 10-year closed flat. Your slash USD closed in green and went up, and VIX closed in the green and went up. Stocks touch record highs before giving up most of those gains into the close. Stocks rose on Wednesday, but gave up most of the gains heading into the close, even after the U.S. and China signed a highly anticipated Phase 1 trade agreement. Senator Elizabeth Warren talks female political successes at Iowa debate. Let's take a listen to that video from ABC News. We would begin with the showdown for Democrats last night, the final debate before the first votes are cast in the Iowa caucuses, less than three weeks away. And tension between Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren took center stage during the debate and in a revealing moment right after. Lindsay Davis starts us off in Des Moines with all the latest. Good morning, Lindsay. Good morning, George. Six candidates, smallest debate stage yet, also the least diverse. As for Senators Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders, they were united on at least one front. They did not come here to fight each other. In fact, their most confrontational moment may have happened after the debate when they deliberately did not shake hands. In the last debate, before the first votes are cast in Iowa, a reluctant face-off between the two progressive senators on stage. Bernie is my friend, and I am not here to try to fight with Bernie. Bernie Sanders continuing to outright deny claims he told Elizabeth Warren during a private conversation in 2018 that a woman could not win the election. Well, as a matter of fact, I didn't say it. Uh, and I don't want to waste a whole lot of time on this, because this is what Donald Trump and maybe some of the media want. Uh, anybody knows me knows that it's incomprehensible that I would think that a woman could not be president of the United States. But Warren insists it happened and that the women on the stage are in better position to take on President Trump. So can a woman beat Donald Trump? Look at the men on this stage. Collectively, they have lost 10 elections. The only people on this stage who have won every single election that they've been in are the women, Amy so and me. And in what could be a sign of simmering tensions, Warren pulled back from a handshake following the debate, abruptly ending the exchange. Last night's debate was also the first since President Trump ordered a strike against a top Iranian general, pushing foreign policy front and center. Sanders and former Vice President Biden battling it out over the origin of the Iraq war. I not only voted against the war, I helped lead the effort against that war. I said 13 years ago it was a mistake to give the president the authority to um, go to war. But others, like veteran Pete Buttigieg, highlighting the generation gap. I bring a different perspective. Uh, there are enlisted people that I served with barely old enough to remember those votes on the authorization after 9-11 on the war in Iraq. And others taking direct aim at the president. Donald Trump is taking us pell-mell toward another war. We have a situation where he got us out of the Iranian nuclear agreement, something I worked on uh, for a significant period of time. As president, I will get us back into that agreement. And as the impeachment of President Trump grips the nation, 
Former Vice President Joe Biden insists it won't be a distraction if he becomes the nominee. It doesn't really matter whether or not he's gone after me. I've got to be in a position that I think of the, of the American people. I can't hold a grudge. I have to be able to not only fight, but also heal. And as President of the United States, that's what I will attempt to do. The stakes were especially high for the three senators on the stage here at Drake University last night as they're going to have to basically come off the campaign trail as they attend the impeachment trial in D.C. for potentially several weeks, six days a week. George? Yeah, that's definitely going to go through Iowa, maybe even New Hampshire. Okay, Lindsay, thanks very much. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And... That does it for this evening edition of the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all enjoyed watching and have a great rest of your Wednesday evening. And I'll see you back here tomorrow for another newscast. And I'll have a news report coming up in a little bit. Good night and bye everyone.